this. Hey, Fort Bend tutoring, Fort Bend tutoring, Fort Bend tutoring, Fort Bend. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, FBT. Hopefully everything is going well with you guys. This video is going to be about simplifying rational expressions. That's right. Rational expressions, ladies and gentlemen, are what? Fractions. They're fractions. That's all that means. Rational expressions are just fractions. So anytime you're dealing with rational expressions, whether they're asking you to simplify them, add them, subtract them, multiply them, divide them, it's all just doing operations that you've been doing with fractions, ladies and gentlemen. So why do they call it rational expressions? Because it has variables in it. But the bottom line is it's just a fraction. Okay. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, rational expressions, you should be thinking fractions, fractionis. All right. So that's what's going on with that. And ladies and gentlemen, here to show you just the basic premise of what we'll be doing in today's lesson, we'll just be doing the same thing you've always done with fractions. And what's that? Simplify them. You've reduce them okay so there are a couple ways to go about doing this one you can find out that common factor that the number in the numerator or the term in the numerator has with the denominator so in this example 20 and 25 can both be reduced by 5 exactly so to show what this looks like all you have to do is say 20 divided by 5 uh -huh, and 25 divided by 5 would equal to 4 fifths and that would be your response, ladies and gentlemen. That would be the answer to that, okay? So when you're simplifying fractions, you find that common factor, the largest common factor that you can find. And in this case, it was five. So we said 20 divided by five is four and 25 divided by five is five. If you look at 20 25 another way to show this is using your prime factorizations, ladies and gentlemen. 20 is made up of two times two times five. And 25 is 5 times 5. So what can I do with this, ladies and gentlemen? Anytime you have a number over itself, you can simplify it. So I can simply say that, hey, these 5s will cancel out because anything over itself is 1. I can multiply the numerator together, that 2 times 2, which gives me 4. And then I only have that 5 in the denominator. So once again, I can show that I have 4 fifths as the result, ladies and gentlemen. So those are going to be the techniques that we'll use when we're dealing with our rational expressions and simplifying them. All right. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this was a requested video. So if you look down there, you'll see the person that requested it. So, hey, appreciate all your requests and we will be cranking these out as quickly as possible. Let's start with some problems. OK. All right. Problem number one, we have 6m plus 18 divided by 7m plus 21. Well, the first thing I want to do when I'm looking at a rational expression, aka a fraction, is that I want to have everything factored out completely. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. In the numerator here, I can factor out a 6. So I'll end up with 6 times m plus 3. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you're factoring, you always look for the greatest common factor, that GCF. So I noticed that in 6m, also in 18, they can both be divided evenly by 6. So that's exactly what I did. I factored out a 6. So you end up with 6 times m plus 3. Then in the denominator, I'll be factoring out a 7. So factoring out 7, I end up with m plus 3. Once I've done that, ladies and gentlemen, notice that I have the exact same factor in the numerator as I do in the denominator, that m plus 3. Anytime you have a situation like this, you can cancel them out. So I'm going to cancel out my m plus 3s. And ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind that when you're canceling things out, when everything is multiplying and dividing, it doesn't cancel to 0, it cancels to 1. So if you wanted to show that, ladies and gentlemen, you can show that this m plus 3 now becomes 1, that m plus 3 in the denominator now becomes 1. Now, when you write your final result, ladies and gentlemen, just multiply it straight across. 6 times 1 is just 6, whereas 7 times 1 is 7, so your answer here is 6 sevenths. Done and done. So once again, when you're approached with a rational expression and you're asked to simplify it, you want to factor as much as possible. And then anytime you have the exact same factor over itself, ladies and gentlemen, you want to simplify that. That's right. Cancel out those common factors in the numerator and the denominator, and then that'll give you your final result. So six sevenths is the result to problem number one. All right, let's move on to the next problem, ladies and gentlemen. 
Problem number two. Okay, we have m squared minus 25 divided by 4m minus 20. In the numerator, notice that we have a difference of two squares. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You have a perfect square minus another perfect square. If that's the case, that binomial is called a difference of squares, and we can factor that. And that's exactly what I'll do. So using the factorization of a difference of squares, ladies and gentlemen, my result will end up being m plus 5 times m minus 5. And all of that is going to be over my result of factoring the denominator. And in the denominator, I have a GCF. The greatest common factor in the denominator is going to be 4. 4 goes evenly in the 4m, and 4 also goes evenly into negative 20. So I'll factor out 4. What is that going to leave me inside of my parentheses? It will leave me with m minus 5, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not sure about your factorization, just multiply it back together to check it out. Notice that 4 times m is 4m, and 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. So that works out just fine. So what will happen next, ladies and gentlemen, is that I'll look to see if I have a common factor in the numerator that matches the one in the denominator. And lo and behold, we have what in common? That's right. We have m minus 5 in common. So my m minus 5s will cancel out. Of course, as I told you before, they cancel out to 1. But if you're comfortable with that, just cancel them out. Done and done. And so next, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be writing our answer. What's left in the numerator is m plus 5. And all of that is going to be over 4, ladies and gentlemen. And that is my answer m plus 5 over 4, done and done. So we factored out our difference of squares in the numerator. We factored out our denominator with the greatest common factor of 4. And then once we had everything factored, we noticed that m minus 5 was a match with our denominators m minus 5. That means we can cancel those out and leaves us with the result of m plus 5 divided by 4. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this because I'm enjoying telling you about it. All right. So here we have problem number 3. We have in the numerator x squared plus 2x minus 15 divided by x squared plus 6x plus 5. So in this numerator here, ladies and gentlemen, I want to factor as much as possible. So what I'll end up doing is I'll be looking for two numbers that'll multiply to give me 15 and subtract to give me 2. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be x plus 5 times x minus 3. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you're uncomfortable with factoring this quadratic trinomial, you can check out our video, Factoring Quadratic Trinomials, Part 1, which discusses exactly how to factor these trinomials here. So check that out. I'm going to put a link at the bottom here, all right? Then in the denominator, I have x squared plus 6x plus 5. So I'm looking for two numbers that will multiply to give me 5 and add to give me 6. Those two numbers will be 5 and 1. So I have x plus plus 5 times x plus 1. We're next going to be looking for any common factors in the numerator and the denominator that we may be able to cancel out. And it so turns out, ladies and gentlemen, that the x plus 5s are gone. That's right. We can cancel those out. And what's left over is x minus 3 and x plus 1. Now, here's the situation, ladies and gentlemen. Notice that you have x over x in our numerator and the denominator. However, we will not be able to cancel these out because you have multiple terms in the numerator and the denominator. The only way that you would have been able to cancel out the x's is if every last one of the elements in this rational expression had x in common. And they don't, ladies and gentlemen. All of the terms don't have x in common. So we can't cancel out the x's, okay? In other words, if everything's not multiplying and dividing as we had in the previous step, and you end up with the exact same factor, you cannot simplify this any further. So our answer here, ladies and gentlemen, is x minus 3 divided by x plus 1, and that's it. There's nothing else you can do. All right. So so here, ladies and gentlemen, my answer is boxed up in red, so you know that's the end result there. That's problem number three. Let's see what else we have. In our next problem, ladies and gentlemen, in problem number four, we have a cubed plus b cubed divided by a plus b. Ladies and gentlemen, in the numerator, this is a sum of cubes, and a sum of cubes is factorable. The factorization for that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the following. It's going to be a plus b times a squared minus AB plus B squared. All right, so that's my factorization of the sum of cubes that I have in the numerator here. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that the trinomial, once you factor any sum of cubes or difference of cubes, the trinomial that you'll get, it'll never be factorable. So you don't have to worry about trying to factor this right here. That's done, it's prime, so you can't do anything with it. 
So after factoring a cubed plus b cubed into a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared, ladies and gentlemen, we'll just place all of this over our denominator of a plus b. From there, ladies and gentlemen, notice that we have the common factor of a plus b in the numerator and in the denominator. All right, we'll be able to cancel out these a plus b's and that'll give me my final result, which is a squared minus a b plus b squared. All right. And that's going to be the result to that problem, ladies and gentlemen. So all you have to do is to factor the numerators, sum of cubes, and then place it over the denominator. These factors canceled out, so that left us with our a squared minus ab plus b squared as our final answer. There's nothing you can do with this. So that's going to be our result there, ladies and gentlemen. That's problem number four. All right, just bugging along, ladies and gentlemen. In problem number five, we have seven minus b divided by b minus seven. Notice that in this problem, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of commonality. There's a lot of similarities here, okay? Is commonality a word? Huh, I don't know. If it's not, I apologize. Oh well. So anyway, there's a lot of similarities between the numerator and the denominator, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Notice that your positive 7 here is the opposite of this negative 7 in the denominator. And you have negative b in the numerator and a positive b in the denominator. Well, the first thing I want to do, ladies and gentlemen, is I want to get some consistency here. So why don't we do the following? Why don't we write our variables first? I have a habit of writing my variables first in an expression. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative b plus 7 all over b minus 7, all right? So that was my first step, ladies and gentlemen, is just to rearrange the numerator. I just rewrote it as negative b plus 7 over b minus 7, okay? From there, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be factoring out negative 1. If I factor out a negative in the numerator, that'll allow me to change the signs of both terms in the numerator. So I end up with a negative parentheses b minus 7 divided by b minus 7. Well, if you see here, ladies and gentlemen, these two factors are identical. And remember, anytime you have the exact same factors over themselves, you can cancel them out because they equal to 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. Of course, you would exclude 0. But anyway, b minus 7 goes into itself once, and b minus 7 goes into itself once. So here, ladies and gentlemen, I'm left with negative 1 divided by 1. So my answer is negative 1. And I'll go ahead and show that. That we had negative 1 over 1, and our final result is negative 1. All right, so that's our result. So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, we went ahead and rewrote this using the commutative property of addition. I was able to switch that around into negative b plus 7 over b minus 7. And then I factored out a negative, ladies and gentlemen, so that my factors would match up. That allowed me the opportunity to cancel out those b minus 7s and give me a final result of negative 1 over 1, which simplifies to negative 1, ladies and gentlemen. And that completes problem number 5. All right. In our next example, ladies and gentlemen, we have example six. We have 7x minus 21 divided by 63 minus 21x. In this denominator, ladies and gentlemen, notice that the second term has a variable x, and I really, really prefer to have my variable first. So I'm going to start out by rewriting this. So I'll end up with 7x minus 21 divided by negative 21x plus 63. So that's what I have thus far. In the numerator, I can factor out a 7. So that's exactly what I'll do. So I'll factor out 7. That'll leave me with x minus 3. In the denominator, I'll factor out negative 21. So factoring out negative 21, I have x minus 3, ladies and gentlemen. So here in this problem, we have a couple of things that we can simplify. For one, we know that we can cancel out these x minus 3s. So gone and gone are you because you're identical. Anytime you have that common factor over itself, you can simplify it. So what we're left with now, ladies and gentlemen, is 7 over negative 21. So notice that 7 and negative 21 can both be reduced by 7, ladies and gentlemen. So what we'll do here is we'll reduce both of these by 7. So 7 goes into itself once, and 7 goes into negative 21, negative 3 times. You can leave your answer as 1 over negative 3, ladies and gentlemen, or you can put a negative out front and just have the overall fraction be a negative 1 third. So either one of these versions, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be absolutely fine. You can leave the denominator with the negative, or you can pull the negative out front and have it as a negative one-third. But as long as you have one negative showing, it is correct, ladies and gentlemen. 
So that concludes problem number six, ladies and gentlemen, and our lesson for today, which dealt with simplifying rational expressions. As always, thank you for watching our videos, ladies and gentlemen, and hopefully this one helped out with simplifying your rational expressions. As always, we're asking you to send us your intro or outro so that you can get in on our videos, ladies and gentlemen. You can send that file to fbt at tutormemath.net. Check out our Facebook page and like us. And as always, we ask you to subscribe, rate, and comment on the video. Videos. Give us some feedback, ladies and gentlemen, so that the next video will be that much better for you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt. Peace. Yeah, yeah. She now rocking with Mr. Witt. A little flavor from Q Beats. You know that this a hit. Michael Jackson bad. Yeah, this is it. A few months ago, I was about to call it quits. Until I came across personalized math tutoring. FBT, the number one solution.